So you had yes. a fiddle player at your camp, you said. This. We, we had a, a fiddle player. Who was, who was it? Do you remember the, where I, they were from? It was, it was a, a female, and she was mostly classically trained, but uh, she could improvise some. How did she do in the, in the camp environment? She, she had a great time, and we uh, had her spend some time with Casey. Yeah. And uh, apparently when she went to her next class, she was a different fiddle player. Wow. Everyone kept coming to me. Telling me about it. Wow. It was, nice. it was very, very nice. We also had Joe Craven. Oh, yeah, do you wow. know Joe Craven? Mm. from the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. What, what does he play? He plays violin. Um, oh, wow. He plays, he plays anything. Oh, wow. He's one of these guys that's just so creative. I mean, he, he literally played a shoestring at one point. Put the mic down there and was walking the bass line. And stuff. But he plays everything. He, I, I, I first knew him when he played with David Grisby. Okay. Played percussions, you know, bongos, and violin, and mandolin. And, but he's just one of these musical, musical guys. And uh, a friend of mine knew that he was headed to North Carolina. So I was able to like, just catch him and bring him in. Uh, but it was great. He's a good guy to know about. And your next camp is scheduled for next year? Yeah, yeah. We'll have a few of them next year. In the summer or? I will have some in the summer. My schedule's not totally planned out. Got it, yet. yeah. But it's now all the camps are from for any instrumentalist or some of them are just bass still. Some of them are still just and how far are you from going into the nine month extended a ways thing? Away. Okay. Uh, this summer, next summer I'll be I'll do a three week camp. Sweet. For just bass or for I think it will just be bass. I've been trying to figure it out and I'm pretty sure it's gonna just be bass. Because it, it gets a little it's a little a logistical problem because again if I have one violin player for three weeks do I hire a yeah pay that expense for a teacher for this three weeks yeah you know, how do I do that so although on the other hand if you have like different instruments then they can play complement each other right like if you have well, ensembles cool like three thing. drummers and three basses that's the great thing but I would hate to, for a drummer to spend three weeks with all bass instruments as soon as I have another instrument, that means I have a, another instructor that I have to hire for that time. That's what makes it difficult. Hmm. But what if you had like four drummers, four basses, four piano players, four if, horns? If, that would be perfect if I had that. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's just it's, making the transition, right? Yeah. Because I'm thinking about the same thing with my camp, trying to transition so that I have rhythm section instruments. Exactly. So it's like, because right. if it's just it's just a violin fest, it's like... Right. But there's positives and negatives of both, you know. Oh, yeah. I usually hire in other instruments for them to play. With. Oh yeah, yeah, got but, it. Um, it can just get a little. Uh, I mean, I might. I'd like to do a rhythm section camp at some point. Right. It would be very, very nice. Oh, I, and, um, I've never had. To. But I think I'm going to start next summer with just bass for three weeks. Yeah. Uh, and that'll be the longest camp we've done. Yeah. We'll see how it goes, and then possibly the next year. Right. Start to branch That's great, man. Yeah, we'll definitely get you down there. I would love to. I'll, I'll send it. Space is very cool. I know. I, yeah. I, I mean, I'm excited to see it and see what you're doing. And I, I should just email you directly about that or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I just took a leave from Berkeley for next uh, semester, which was a pretty hard decision because I, you know, I wanted to be able to spend more time with, uh, you know, doing my own things and, and, you know, but still teaching though, but like doing my own things like camps and creating materials and stuff, you know. So, um, and, uh, That's good. I hope you keep doing the camps and things. Too. Yeah, I'm going to try to keep it going. I'm, I'm going to email you again before next summer too, so in case you have any uh, overflow. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, if you email wanna... me as soon as, as soon as you know the dates. The dates, I will. As soon as you do you uh, do you feel that there's like a uh, do you think that there's a, a divide? Now I'm just in video blog mode because I've, I've started this like whole uh, educational video blog series, you know, for creative string players. I'm calling. So I like to just ask you, like, do you think that there's a divide between, let's say, bass players and guitar players on one hand, and then like other string players, or, or do you I think, think it's what kind of divide? I mean, like in terms of like educationally, like what people learn or what well, skills they develop naturally or well, maybe the culture I, of learning or I would say yes th there doesn't have to be right but I think there is because of us teachers right how we teach you know? um, and, and, 
and there there are certain ways that we're used to learning. Um, if you play violin, you're usually going through one of two schools. You know, the, the classical training and now the, the bluegrass training. And a lot of times bluegrass, you're learning in a very organic way, which is how I do it. You're sitting under a tree with a bunch of people better than you, jamming, you know, at a festival or whatever. And that's how I do it, just jamming. But nowadays, for a, a bass player, you're learning, you know, probably probably from a teacher, some books, YouTube, and things like that. And it's less playing with people, less jamming. So it's, it's in my opinion, less organic. Um, but does it have to be a divide? I don't think so. Right. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. That, that makes a lot of sense, definitely. I don't ever claim to be right when I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and uh, you wrote a great book called The Music Lesson, which which I've read and I think is amazing. Um, has anybody ever described it as as a parable? Have you ever heard it described yeah, that way? Yeah, I've, I've heard some people talk about it that way. Uh, and, mo I, and mostly in a sense that I get a lot of people who do other things. Like one lady's a gardener. And, you know, the way music is broken up into ten parts in the book, she gave me those same ten parts to gardening. I had a, a cook, a chef, do the same thing. Um, I had one other person, I can't remember what he did, but he did it very, very well for what he did. And, uh, and so I thought that, that was pretty neat, that people that don't play music are still getting something from it. Yeah, that's really I really neat. enjoyed that. That's great. And it's in German now. That's pretty neat. That's really cool, man. Yeah, German translation. Well, you're, the, what it says. well, you're the only guy that I've ever known. I'm, maybe somebody's done it before, but... It's the only time I've ever seen someone who released a CD and a book at the same time. I thought that was ingenious. Yeah, yeah, on the same day. Uh, that's something I've really kind of been trying to do for years, but not with a book. I've been trying to release two CDs at the same 